How likely are you to suffer workplace burnout? And what causes you to get it? I'm Dr. David Geyer, orthopedic surgeon, and I help you feel and perform your best regardless of age, injuries, and yes, burnout. Burnout is one of the hot topics in the corporate and the medical worlds right now because, quite honestly, it's really common. If you look at corporate and business HR leaders, 95% are struggling with workplace retention, with job retention, because people are leaving largely due to workplace stress. There's even a burnout book called Mommy Burnout about women trying to do it all and be super moms. In the medical world, burnout's extremely common. Uh, More than half of U.S. physicians experience symptoms of burnout on a regular basis. And I think the whole burnout syndrome, the last statistic I saw was about 44% of physicians have the the entire burnout syndrome that we've talked about in uh, previous videos. So it's really common. There was a survey by Gallup of 7,500 U.S. employees, 23% regularly, what they say very often or always, feel burned out in their work. And another 44%, meaning 67%, two-thirds of American workers, but the other 44% at least felt burned out sometimes. Now, how does this happen? Well, a lot of it is just the nature of our jobs today and the always-on world that we live in with email and texts on our phone and social media and everybody being able to contact us at all times. We're working longer hours than we ever have before. In addition to our regular jobs, again, we're taking our work home with us. But the pressure in our jobs, the pressure to meet expectations from our bosses and to please our coworkers, to please our patients, please our customers, all that builds up. Then we come home frustrated and our families are frustrated with us because we're frustrated and we're exhausted. All of that can take a tremendous toll. Plus, there are a number of workplace dynamics that can be uh, problematic. You know, you could have a dysfunctional workplace meeting that your boss micromanages you or maybe your coworkers undermine you and try to get credit for things maybe that you did. It could be a chaotic work environment with tons of go, go, go and pressure and all this. Or it could be a very monotonous job. You might be frustrated by a lack of control, meaning you have no input on the tasks that are being required of you or your job duties. Uh, You're just being told what to do and you never get input in it. It could be unclear job expectations from the leader or from the boss so that you're sort of trying to figure out what you're supposed to be doing and then maybe you get criticized for not sort of being able to read the mind of the leader. All of this can play a role. And when you look at the Mayo Clinic's definition of job burnout, and some of the risk factors for that, I think it's fascinating as well. One of the key ones is that you work in a service or profession aimed at helping people, which is obviously largely healthcare. Uh, That's obviously a a health helping industry, but maybe you work for a nonprofit or an industry like that. Obviously the high workload plays a role in it, but it could be that you identify so much with your work and you care so much about about your work that there's no balance. You're putting all your time, all your eggs into the work basket and you're ne- never taking breaks, never really pursuing things in your personal life. And we'll talk a little bit about that in some of the future videos when we talk about ways to prevent burnout. But job burnout in whatever field you work in is a big deal in American society. Estimates of just the medical costs per year of, of job burnout range between $125 billion and $190 billion, taking care of problems like type 2 diabetes and high cholesterol and GI issues and so many other things that result from this chronic workplace stress. If you add in absenteeism, decreased productivity, and some of the legal issues, Harvard Business Review estimates that job burnout costs the U.S. economy $300 billion a year. So we need to take steps to recognize burnout and then take steps to prevent it and treat it if it happens. We're going to talk about that in some of the upcoming videos about things we can do as employees, as workers, as physicians, everybody that's affected by this, things that we can do on a daily basis to reconnect with why we do what we do, to take better care of ourselves so that we don't get burned out in our jobs. If you like this video, click the other videos below to get more information, and I'll see you right here next time.